as we've been talking the last couple of days, people have been uh, showing you their code delivery at the end of each talk, and we thought it might be useful if we pull together all the code delivery into one talk. And that's the purpose of this talk, is to show you what's out there right now, and to show you what we plan to deliver in the next few months. My talk has four parts. Uh, the first question is, how do I find the code? And then once I've found the code, what's out there right now? And what do we plan to deliver in the next uh, 12 months or so? And then I'll have a quick summary and acknowledgments. So if we start with accessing the code. You go to mosrp.uh.edu and you log in as a corporate sponsor. Each corporate sponsor has a unique ID and password. And if your ID or password has been misplaced, please send an email to Professor Wegline, and he will have the uh, ID or password reset. Once you log in, go to Research, Projects, and Coding Projects, and what you'll find is a list of the coding that you can download. And the code is listed in reverse chronological order, meaning the most recent code is first all the way down to the oldest code. So it's newest code down to oldest code. And uh, each code has documentation, but it assumes that uh, you know Unix, Seismic Unix, MPI, C, Fortran. Uh, the code is written in Fortran or C or C++ and is run in a Unix environment, and we assume that you are familiar with that. So starting with the, uh, the code, you just logged in, you're looking at the list of code, and I was trying to figure out what's the best way to uh, organize this code for you, and I said, well, maybe the best way is just to go down the code as you see it on the, on the website. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm starting with the newest code and going to the oldest code. Uh, the first thing you'll see um, is something that you asked, you the corporate sponsors asked, you put on the website. Uh, Fon Lud has developed some finite difference code, which uh, to me is pretty amazing. It has a sphere above a horizontal reflector and it shows the uh, imaging around that sphere coming off that horizontal reflector. Uh, the, the theory that it's the finite difference part is based on is by Alfred et al. And then the ISS imaging is by Shaw et al. and Von Lu et al. And of course the code delivery is by Von Lu. Continuing down the list of code, the next thing you'll find is something that Paolo Torini put on the website. Um, as you've heard the last couple of days, the advantage of the ISS internal multiple algorithm is it doesn't need anything except the data. The disadvantage is it's very compute intensive. And Paolo was thinking, is there a way to speed up the pro to speed up this algorithm? And he came up with what I consider a very creative idea, which is well, gee, if your data has limited diff, then we can truncate some of these intervals, which will significantly speed up the processing of the code. And um, what this is, is an, ad an additional script that Paolo put out there that says, um, here's, here's a, a, a script that demonstrates how this works. And here's the Western GCO synthetic data, which they most graciously let us put on the uh, website. And so here's a good way to see how uh, this using limited diff data to speed up the code can actually work. Continuing on, the next thing on the list is something else that Paolo put out there. Uh, there's two parts to this, uh, this release. Uh, the first part is on this slide, the second part's on the next slide. I couldn't squeeze it all into one slide. And uh, these are uh, another, this is code using Paolo's idea of truncating intervals. And uh, what we, whoops, and what we have here is uh, two implementations, one for horizontally layered earth and one for earth with lateral variations. 
And again, it's using this idea of we can take advantage of limit, limited dip to truncate minerals. Now, as you've heard in the talks, the theory of how the uh, internal multiple algorithm works is by Arujo, Wegline, et al. And then the theory of using the limited dip was by Terengi and Wegline and Ayadi and Wegline. And the code development was by Sam Kaplan, who wrote the uh, internal multiple algorithm, which I thought was pretty impressive, Sam, and uh, modified by uh, Paolo. The other part of this uh, release was uh, what I call release two of Green's theorem code, and what that does is de-ghost marine data. Uh, this release two, which in theory is by Wegwine et al., Xinfang Zhang, and Wegwine and Xinfang Zhang. Uh, this release of the code I tested on field data during my second internship at PGS. <coughs> Continuing down the list of code, the next item is the second release of the free surface multiple elimination code. Uh, theory by Cavaglio and Wedwine et al. And code development again by Sam. And uh, Paolo made some uh, changes, which is why this is the second release. The next item is Kenyard to Hoop code, which as you know, is one way of generating synthetic data. When Jingfang Zhang was here, he wrote this code to generate code for testing his deghosting code. And uh, the uh, paper that he used as his theory base was by De Hoop and uh, Vanderheim, which is uh, included in the documentation. Continuing on down the list of code, uh, we have release <coughs> one of the Green's theorem code and uh, this I tested on field data and same data during my first internship at PGS. Uh, same theory, uh, but I do want to recognize Paolo's contribution here because uh, this was my first time to do something in C. And as I tell people, Paolo taught me how to spell C. Continuing on down the line, uh, we have the uh, 3D ISS internal. Uh, uh, multiple removal code, again by uh, Sam with theory by Cavaglio and Wedwine et al. Uh, we have forward modeling code. Uh, this is an earlier version of the first thing we talked about on loose finite difference code. Uh, we have an earlier version of using Green's theorem or extension theorem as it's called, as you heard in one of the talks, to estimate the wavelet. And we have a, the uh, Zheng Fang Zhang's uh, 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 de-ghosting based on Green's theorem. And we have uh, the first release of the pre-surface multiple code. And we have an early release of the internal multiple code. And last but not least is we have adaptive subtraction developed by Kaplan and Eminen. And this was specifically designed for the ISS free surface multiple uh, application. So you've seen uh, a, a lot of Sam Kaplan and Paolo Terengi in the code that we have out there on the uh, on the website. Now that's the 13 sets of code that we have out there now. What do we plan to deliver in the next few months? Uh, Lynn Tang, when she was here, you've heard her name mentioned because how do you know what the reference velocity is in, for example, field data? Well, Lynn developed an iterative procedure for estimating the reference velocity when it's unknown. And uh, the theory, she published the theory in, in Lynn time and Webline, and uh, she developed the code. Another thing she did was she took the Kenyard to Hoop code developed by Zhengfang Zhang, and she added density change to the code so we, so we can create uh, data that has velocity changing or density change or and or density changing. What sort of models are possible of a Kenyard to Hoop method? I mean, it, it, it's like, uh, I know it's like a layer with a, yes. uh, the free surface and, 
any, any, is it 1D or just one layer with the pre-surface? It's, uh, it's 1D and uh, I think we're limited to two layers. Okay. But the advantage is it's very accurate. Right. Because as you know, it works in space in space time domain. Yeah. And it, and you can have a real free surface on top. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We use uh, we use it a lot for generating synthetic data for testing. Oops. How did that? How did Push buttons. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next uh, thing we plan to deliver is you heard uh, Jim Long talk about replacing the point isotropic source with an extended source. And he has code that uh, where he's modified the uh, internal multiple, I'm sorry, free surface multiple elimination uh, to replace the isotropic point source with an extended source with a radiation pattern. Uh, Jen Long also took the Kenyard to hoop code and added additional parameters to it. And uh, this is what I call release three of the uh, Green's theorem data, Green's theorem code, which is the ghosting code. Uh, after I got back from uh, two internships at PGS, I had learned a lot about processing data and about C. And so I took another pass at this to make it uh, uh, what I consider smarter. You heard Dr. Wegline say that one advantage of Green's theorem in the space frequency domain is you don't need a, a horizontal or flat measurement surface. And this was the first code to actually take advantage of that. In other words, in earlier code, I, for simplicity, I had assumed flat measurement surface. This does not require a flat measurement surface. Um, going on, uh, you heard Xing Lu Lin talk about 3D source, 2D earth, and uh, her code she's going to uh, put on the website. And uh, you heard Jing Wu talk about two things. One is doing Green's theorem not in space frequency, but in wave number frequency. And why is that? Well, you've got, you've got trade-offs. If you do Green's theorem in space frequency, like I do, you can have any kind of measurement surface, but you can only approach the cable so far. And in round numbers, if delta x is the difference between your receiver groups, you can't get any closer to the cable than about one half delta x. And uh, somebody's talk showed the reason why, as you approach the cable, the Green's function and its derivative become more spike-like. Well, if you have finite sampling, you're, start, you're going to start missing the Green's, there, the Green's function and its um, derivative. And so you can only approach the cable so far, which is fine. I mean, it, you, basically what happens is here's your measurement surface, and you create a new measurement surface that's deghosted. But if you don't want to do that, if for some reason you want to deghost on your measurement surface, then you use the, the uh, wave number frequency domain. But now you're restricted to a perfectly flat measurement surface. So trade-offs. Um, the other thing that Jing Wu did, she talked about, is onshore, and uh, she'll be delivering. She'll be delivering this letter. Uh, going on down the list, um, we heard Chao Ma get a get a talk about because the internal multiple algorithm is uh, the first term. It can, under certain circumstances, create additional non-physical data. And he's come up, and he and Dr. Redline and Hong Liang, who's also here, have come up with theory to handle that. And Chow is developing code to implement that. And so this would be an improvement to the internal multiple algorithm. Uh, 2D direct depth imaging. I think you heard Dr. Wedline say a, a couple of talks ago 
that we're going to start delivering direct depth imaging. And uh, the theory has been building up, uh, start, you know, Shaw et al., Fong Lu et al., Shen Song Jiang and, and Wei Wang, Shu Li, Fong Leong, Zichang Wang have each added to the intelligence, as I call it, of the ISS depth imaging algorithm. And the uh, code development by Fong Lu and Shen Song Jiang will be, the first delivery will be in December of this year. And that will be the first of several deliveries. Um, you also heard Yang Li talk about eliminating, not, <coughs> excuse me, not attenuating, but eliminating internal multiples. And uh, his, his code is scheduled for delivery in approximately a year. And so what we have here is 11 sets of code in the pipeline to be delivered over the next several months. So and to give a quick summary, we have 13 sets of code currently on the website. We have 11 more coming. And of course, we thank you, the sponsors, for uh, supporting us while we test and, and develop and release this code. Uh, any questions? <clears throat> any chance that uh, Kenyard to Boot code, that sounds like that might be you know, generally useful to the geophysical community and not so proprietary. Would you consider submitting that as like a software and algorithm submission for geophysics? Making it more available? It's just a thought. Although well, the editor's a bit behind on his work right now. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Okay, well, thank you for your time.